Hello homeschoolers! Welcome to the land of Kakiak. My name is Laurel and today we're going to talk about my updated McGuffey's reader-based elementary language arts program. Okay, I've shared this before but I've recently updated it. I've made some new resources and I just thought I would actually go through this in a little more detail level by level. I'm kind of a show me don't tell me kind of person so if you are too that's what we're going to be doing. Okay, I'll link to this document in my, the description box if you want your own printable. Um, but let's go through it until you kind of see how I have put together a language arts program based around the McGuffey readers um, for the elementary years. So this is just a cover page. This is just a page that if you get this, you'll have my notes on how to use this program. But we won't go over it because we're going to do that together. But it's nice to have something to refer back to. Um, this page is materials and resources. So these are things that I have either bought or created that complement and support um, my language arts program with the McGuffey readers being at the center of that. What makes up a language arts program? For us, it's reading, writing, grammar, spelling, vocabulary. Anything in this page of the document that's underlined, these are all links to these resources. If they're not underlined, it's because there's a few things in here that are contained within this document itself. Also, you'll already have it if you have this, but I'll show them to you. And these down here, some of these things, there are free printable versions of, and so I've, these are, you know, things that you purchase. These are some of the things that you can just print out for free at home if you need to do that. So let me just, sh I think it'd be helpful just to show you. Now you're not gonna need everything I show you right now at one time. <laughs> so it's gonna look like a lot, but just remember this is going from like kindergarten to like fifth grade. So let's just get our eyes on stuff so we know what we're talking about. So the McGuffey readers, the, I prefer the revised editions. That's also, that's what's in the public domain. So there are free, like down here at Project Gutenberg, you can download these readers for free and print them out yourself. I actually picked up, um, you know, an old copy. I love these. They're, you, I, every time I look at them online, they're really reasonably priced. And the originals, um, they just have, I don't know, I've talked about this before, but they just have superior, you know, illustrations. that I absolutely adore. And these illustrations are so good for um, giving the kids um, you know, a mental image to go with the words they're learning, which we, we now know is really important uh, for kids retaining, or people, not just kids, but people learning to read, for them retaining those words. And they have a picture for every single reading passage, like in this primer. and. We, we use these, these are actually a, a valuable part of our lessons. Okay, so those are the readers. And there's, um, I think, I believe there's six readers. Um, but uh, my program here is only going up to the fourth. So just that's all, that's all I've gotten through so far. So that's all I can talk about. <laughs> okay, so those are the readers. Uh, phonics made plain flashcards. They look like this. I like these. And so they've got, you know, upper and lower case in a typical font that you would see, like, you know, in typeface that you would see to read. So though, even though like this A, it's different than handwriting, but it's important that they can read both. And um, I do have some videos on what I do in preschool to help with this, but that's another video. <laughs> I'll maybe I'll try to find it and link it. But then they've got sample words and these come with a wall chart. Um, that's what this is referring to and any exceptions. So, and they have, it's not just like ABCs, it's other like graphemes. It'll cover all the phonemes. Right? So this is a good set to have on hand. And this, I believe is not linked in here, but this is the book that those flashcards refer to. I, I kind of don't think you have to like, have to get it but it's nice to have and it's pretty inexpensive the ABC's and all their tricks okay reading comprehension bookmarks these are actually this is a, a printable resource I just print these out on cardstock and cut them out so reading comprehension and grammar comprehension bookmarks they're in the same set 
I just, I updated them. I just updated the font. But the blue is usually where you start. But these are bookmarks. These will help you along the way. I've just used these an absolute ton. I just print out each of my kids, gets their own set. And then I made them so that when you, when you cut these out, this is like, they're like two like that. But this is at the bottom and it makes like extra bookmarks. So we use these all the time for just like our normal reading books or textbooks. So you end up with a bunch of bookmarks, which is, I always feel like I'm always looking for a bookmark. Okay, so that's what those are. The phonics fill-in chart, that is provided, it looks like this, it's in this document. I adapted this from the McGuffey readers themselves, so you'll see I'm using their terminology here. You can just fill that in as you go. If you would like magnifying glass paperweight, this is a funny thing to say you need, but it's this. <laughs> it's a link to this, and we use it all the time, like all the time. What I love is using it for, just let the kids look at the pictures up close because they're so detailed. Oh, love it. But we use it all the time. Like we've been doing a money unit recently, like with coins. I'm gonna grab one for my kindergartner. And he loves to grab this. But especially like quarters have all types of different pictures on them. And to anything you want to study really close, it's so nice to have. And, it uses, and you can use it as a paperweight too, which I totally do. I'm always holding books open with it while I work and stuff. Okay, on to writing resources. So copy workbooks. So of course, if you want, we're gonna have our kids do copy work, you could just use any notebook you want, right? I personally wanted a copy book that had like the dashed lines and I had a bunch of things I wanted <laughs> from, my, from my copy book resource that I just couldn't find so I just made them exactly how I wanted them. And I wanted them to have model handwriting there's two versions. These are the pre-printed ones and these are the Etsy versions where you can just print them out, buy and print them out yourself. I just happen to have um, the primer, a, a pre-printed version from Amazon on hand. So I'm gonna show it to you. But this is for copy work. Um, for, you can see I wanted it, I wanted the model handwriting. I did it in like a gray color so that they could trace it and still see their own line and then I want them to have their own line and I want them to have room to draw. This is when they're really young. And I wanted my copy work to get smaller over the levels because, you know, they're going to be getting more control and writing smaller. And they don't, you know, I like it. It's nice when it's at the early stages when it's bigger so they can see it better. Oh, and this is, this is the primer copy work. So it all, I always keep in the script because they do that in the McGuffey readers. It'll be like in typeface, but then they'll have script passages so they can learn how to read cursive. I don't have the same font that they used. I am teaching my kids to write in a Danilian style. So that's what's in my books. Okay, so copy work, All right? So there's hard copies. This is what we use. And then there's also like William is actually is almost done with the second reader right now. This is a printable version. But you know, where I just print it and bound it myself, or you could put this in a binder or whatever. And it looks like that, right? But printable versions, let's see. Two colored pens. This is for you for your correcting. So make sure you have two colored pens or two colored pencils. I just, of course I like these um, also. If you have these that just have the multiple colors, it makes it really easy to do your correcting. Cause I like to do everything good in one color, like do lots and lots of positive reinforcement and acknowledgement of what they did well or improved on. And then, you know, do a different color for the things that you want to draw their attention to. So they're, they're, they're seeing both. They're seeing both um, positive and negative critique of their work. Okay, sentence scaffolds. That, so this is when you want to teach your kids how to start teaching them how to put to, together sentences. It's like sometime in first or second grade. So that's this. Sorry, right. it's we're we're currently using it, so that's why it's. I keep it in one of these envelopes so that we can just go over it. But that's a link to this where we're going through putting, you know, sentence structure, but also some grammar concepts. So oh, let's try to show you the cover. So you can, this is what it looks like: sentence scaffolds. 
And of course, I give you a little letter, something to talk about at the beginning. But yeah, this is how I like to use it. And we'll, I'll go through, I'll make a video where I go through each level that I'm going to show you today. And we'll do sample, I'll do some sample lessons for you so you can see how these things work and why, why they work and what we're trying to accomplish. It's a sentence scaffolds, the stories and grammar. That's this one. This is a printable resource. And I just printed it out, made my own little you know, workbook for this one. And I, I talked about this in a prep and chat, I think, when I had just finished it and I was putting it together. So again, we're trying to, we're upping their writing level there, um, and we are practicing authentic writing, right? To learn grammar through authentic writing. But again, I'll show you more examples on this later, but that's what that, that one is. Weekly paragraph. So we want to get the kids writing at the paragraph level. So we've got, I love this resource, uh, writing fabulous sentences and paragraphs. And I made this compliment to go along with it. Um, weekly paragraphs that used with writing fabulous sentences and paragraphs, right? And it is to keep all the writing in, but I just find there's a lot of things that have really good information, even good exercises, but it's not enough practice. So I find myself needing something else. Like, so th this is like a little perfect little married couple, these two for paragraph writing. And then the fourth reader companion notebook, that is this resource. So actually, this happens a lot, like with printables, there's so much to them that I, this I actually split into like thirds. And this is about a third of it. And I made three little workbooks with it. But that's McGuffey's fourth reader. This is a companion notebook for reading and writing practice that goes with this, um, with that book. Once you get up to the fourth reader. We'll talk more about that uh, later. Okay, grammar. This is a highlighter set. This is my favorite set. I have a set and I bought a set for each kid. Yeah, this is my favorite color scheme and everything because I like the, well, partly it's because I like the gray. And I'll tell you exactly why I like this gray later. <laughs> but I love these because they have the straight edge like that, which is great for making little check boxes or like highlighting a whole line. But then they also have a fine tip on the other side, which is great for tracing certain things or just underlining something. So I love these. I buy these over and every time they run out, I just like get this set again. I love it so much. And it's really comfortable to hold in your hand. Anyways, highlighter set. You might already have highlighters around that you like. So grammar, flashcards, and exercises for copy work. So this is a compliment to go to copy work. So we do copy work or us all the way through the third reader. And something that we I start adding on is this copy work compliment and grammar flashcards. So that's what this is. I just put these out. Cardstock, cut them out. Um, there's comprehension questions for the copy work. Some grammar exercise ideas just written out. I've got concepts you can cover, you know, K through three. I've kind of just roughly um, colored them by like what level they would be grouped together an introduction to sentence sentences like sentence structure um, punctuation sentence type and then I've got a couple levels to go through with your copy work I think I've got three levels yeah, let's put each three. yeah and then here's click clicks to even like more resources in that in that one but we'll go through this together when we get to that in the levels. It's another printable resource. The grammar fill-in sheet, that's something, again, that is already provided with this. It just is very simple, something you could fill out and use however you like, like, or as you do something, as you work with them, have the kids fill it out or you fill one out, whatever you wanna do. Grammar and punctuation. This is a book um, that illustrated this is optional, but we own these and we, I like them. There's actually two. I think 
Grammar and Punctuation Illustrated. I think that's this one. These are Usborne books. and But I have the first one also, the first Illustrated Grammar and Punctuation. Both of these. Um, this one is a little too intense at first. So I would start off with this one and maybe sometime around you know, third grade switch to this one. But yeah, love these books. They're more of like a reference. They're not the core of our grammar, you know what I mean? But they're, they're good to have. And then there is Gentle Grammar Levels 1 through 4. So this is, I have one right here that's like the Amazon version, like the pre-printed ones. These are made by Sherry over at um, Mom Delights and she offers them, you can buy them, I think this was only like $10 or something on Amazon for a book, but you can get them for free. She offers them for free as a PDF and I link that here. So she adapted um, a grammar book by CC Long into these. Oh, and by the way, um, this is just a little binding tip if you have a comb binder like me. I did recently buy chipboard because I, I do just print so much. I make so many workbooks and copy work, but copy books and stuff. I just bought a thing of chipboard, which I think it was like 22 bucks or something. But if you're just making a couple here and there, um, <laughs> this is like from an, another notebook I had. You could just rip it off. See how nice and thick it is? Rip it off the back of your old notebooks. Don't throw them out and just cut off the rough edge and then punch it and bind it. And then you have a much sturdier, you know, notebook of your own. Anyways, cheap tips. <laughs> okay, so it's grammar now, spelling and vocab. So it's McGuffey's spelling book. So this is what I base all my word lists around. And so this is, you can buy, you know, I bought mine news. I think I wanna say I bought this for like $6 on Amazon and it was in practically brand new condition. I mean, it's a reprint, but it's so great. You can also, print it for free because it's in the public domain. So you can find it at Project Gutenberg. So I shared it right here for you. So I love this. It gives so much information. I like the grouping of the words and their patterns. And I like all the diacritics and I like that they mark accents and syllables and everything because it makes checking our work easier too. And you'll see when I go through the spelling a little bit more. There's that. The spelling workbook. So I do have these on Amazon, but I also, um, I think this is the link to the printable version. So I have six levels. And again, this is ones where I print them out like in thirds and bind them just so that they're not so big for the kids to deal with. But um, this is what I'm talking about. Oh, I always I tape in a little envelope so I can put our flashcards in there. They just go in there, and keep whatever set they're working on. This is one, I was gonna put it away because he's done with it, he's on the next one, but this is our workbook that we put together and we've got our word list, I've got a how to use this book for you. And we just go through the activities. You can see we use highlighters. <laughs> anyway, so this is what I'm talking about. I'm talking about these, the spelling program. This is my spell is a link to some of my spelling videos that I've done previously. Although sometimes I like update my workbooks or update the activities a little bit. So yeah, just sometimes you might see my video and you're it's basically the same activity. You might buy it and you're like, it's basically the same thing, but I may have tweaked it a tiny bit because I'm always trying to make things better, you know? Okay, weekly vocabulary packet. So when they get up to they're ready for vocabulary, I'll show you the books we like to use. So we like to use these Red Hot Root Words books, one and two. They probably wouldn't, they may not get, they wouldn't get probably to book two in elementary school. So I'll just move it to the side, but um, they'd probably get to book one possibly, right? And this is going over prefixes, suff prefixes suffixes, and root words that are Latin based. And again, this is like another one of those things where I liked the book, I liked the information, I liked the activities, but it's just not enough practice for it to really stick. So I created a weekly packet that could go with each um, word group and I give some cheat sheets in there, you know, so that they can have extra practice. So they, I have them go do this in the book, but I also have them do this. So that's what that is. And that's what I have left off on. So those are all my favorite resources. All right, so I'm gonna stop the video here now that you've seen 
what resources you'll need for, for the elementary years. And we will get into level one next time where we go through the primer and the first reader and what the plan is for those. Okay, I'll talk to you soon.